What's going on everybody? So I just recently connected with people over at Commarker and they sent me a UV laser to give a try. Um, something I've been interested in and wanted to check out because it's supposed to be the bridge between all the other Galvos and be able to work with similar products. Um, granted, it does have its limitations as well, but we're gonna jump into it right now. All right, anytime I get a laser, the first stop obviously is looking at the outside of the shipping, the box. Um, all in all, pretty good. Uh, I always question whether it comes in a cardboard box, uh, whether that was a good idea or not. Um, they do have like these reinforced corners with these like plastic things, but you can see that this one didn't uh, fare so well. Um, a little gouge here, but other than that, box is pretty pristine. So we'll crack this sucker open and see how everything is packaged. Well, it feels like Christmas because we got a box in a box. Um, I mean, running joke in my family is, oh look, you got a box. So let's get the next box open. So here we are into the actual box where the laser is. Um, you see, this is where that outside part was broken, um, but really there's enough padding around the outside that it wasn't even close to doing any kind of damage. Uh, looks pretty good so far. <clears throat> you got manuals, uh, look like lens cap, and looks like some papers, some testing stuff. Oh, looks like this is a shield that did get broken. So I'm guessing that you hold this up so you can look at what's going on. But yeah, that looks like it busted um, up by the head. So we'll we'll get closer at these but I'm not gonna go through every single thing, but looking at this, I mean, the head looks like it's fine. I think it probably just put pressure on that acrylic. Um, everything looks pretty tight, so I'll get everything out and just note anything that seemed subpar. Okay, everything is mostly out of the box, so just showing you what's in the box. So you've got the actual Galvo head um, and really the laser source that's sitting in here. Uh, you got goggles, the lift table, whatever that means. It's probably just the, maybe the motors or something that connects to the tower. Um, but lift table, foot switch, accessory kit, materials kit. Um, here is the tower. So that will go on top of the base that is still in the box. So base here. Um, so we'll get this guy out and get everything put together. I'm not going to show every single thing because nobody really cares about me putting in a screw. So. Let's go. All right, so all put together. Honestly, it was pretty easy. It, I mean, you have large bolts that go there. They're the only ones, there's four of them. Um, all the plugs on the back of the head and actually the back of the laser source, they only go where they can go. So not too hard to figure out. Um, there is one, it's interesting, it's just labeled wire. Um, but it is the power that comes from the base unit from like the actual motherboard and everything and then plugs into the tower for the lift um, So yeah, pretty easy. So let's get the thing powered on plugged into the computer. See how hard it is I'm gonna use light burn because I don't like easy CAD um, so I'll run you through connecting it real quick and then we'll just do a couple of quick um, Tests and just see what it's all about Got a lot more to do as far as actually testing a UV. Never used one before. Um, this is the, gonna be the first time. So with most lasers, um, you should be able to come into Lightburn and just click devices and do find my laser. You do have to have the pro version of Lightburn to do this because you need to have more than just the diode G code stuff. Um, pro is gonna have all of your DSP for the gantry CO2s and then everything Galvo for Galvo machines. So let's go next. All right, and so there you'll see it's a JCZ fiber. Um, that's what most of the Galvos are gonna come up as. Um, I say most because I'm not sure. But yep, go ahead and you'll say add device. And then this is where it wants to import um, EasyCAD settings. So if you say import, then you actually want to go over to the USB drive that actually came with the machine and you'll have Omni. Um, it should be in the software. You're looking for the mark file. 
which I believe So it's going to be this Mark 7. So please go away. Yeah, so it's going to be this Mark 7 file that is here. Um, usually you can tell because it will be the newest file. So grab that one, say open. And this pulls over all of the settings for the actual machine. So you can see all this stuff here, blah, 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 blah. Um, you see this red, so core file. Um, we're going to go grab that in just a little bit when we actually get into the device itself. So then you'll just say next. It should already put in what these are going to be. And you'll say next, next, and then you're done. So you just say okay. Yep, so now we'll just go, yep, there's UV. Okay, so it's already got my field size, everything in there. Um, the core file that was going to be in here. So you can see right here. So core file, what it does is these lenses are round. So round lenses, they have distortion. So the core file helps fix some of that distortion. Um, Omni or um, Com Marker, they actually already have one of those files in here. So let's go back. Where is it at? No, not seven. Oh, yep, it's right here. And open. So that's going to go ahead. That's going to put in all the settings that you need to fix the lens distortion. Granted, there are videos, and I'll put one right here. Um, if you want to run a core file yourself and be able to actually create this, um, but I'm not going to show that in this video. Um, another cool thing that ComMarker did do is they added a material library. So you can actually come in here, we'll jump to that USB drive again, Omni, and then I believe it was in here. Maybe I'm just on drugs. Okay, yep, light burn, and then look, material library. So you open that, and then they've already got a bunch of different test things that you can go and play with. Um, settings to already start with and just get going. All right, so for one test, um, I'm gonna do some wood. So I've got this wood that they have right here, and they have wood. And then it's 1000 by 80 power. So let's go ahead and look at this. So with UV, from what I understand, and power is not actually a thing, um, but you've got speed, frequency, and the Q pulse. Those are what drive UV. Power is actually nothing. Um, so it doesn't, it will always stay the same. It's these other three guys that actually run it. So here are some of the settings that they put in there. Um, and it looks like it's just doing one directional, which is interesting, but we're gonna go ahead, we'll just run it as is. And we'll go ahead and preview. You can kind of see where it is right there on the wood. And let's run it, see what happens. Okay, two passes and that's what you got. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Just pull it off. Nice, consistent engraving. I mean, it's not ultra dark, but it looks good. Nice and tight, sharp lines. Um, that usually means that that core file is pretty good. So as I've been working with this, and one thing that I'm noticing, um, just nature of the beast, it does not like black that much. Like I can actually kind of see it in the camera, but with my naked eye, like it's a little bit hard. So yeah, on white shows up really nice.
So you may have to just like when you're positioning things, you know, like this, I lined it up with the corners and I was able to see, oh, yeah, that's where I want it um, and go from there. Uh, this is actually a tester that I'm going to do. It's actually for a customer and I'm going to use the paper settings to try and get the cover of this notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Pretty sweet. All right, um, you can see that I've done a couple of different tests and because this is not stainless steel, it's a little bit different. I, I've had to slow speeds down, but you can still see it's making a mark on the surface of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this one. And there you are. Go ahead and wipe it off a little bit. So marking the surface. Um, can't even really feel the mark. But there you go. So slower speeds, faster speeds. But there you go. Being able to mark metal is definitely the bridge between the fiber and a CO2. The UV is able to touch your metals, um, wood, uh, the, the organic stuff like this. I guess maybe not organic, but notebooks, you name it, really the plastics also, the Galvo is where it's at. All right, and here is some transparent acrylic, so clear acrylic. Gonna go ahead and we'll mark that. All right, so glass, it did work, um, but I can see that focus is pretty important for glass. Um, as it goes out of focus a little bit more, it struggles on the edges. And then at the beginning, the first time I ran it, it actually was like burning through to the inside part of the cup. Um, but yeah, nice and frosty, not like crystal breakage like you kind of get with a CO2. So this will be really good, but it, can't really do it with cylinder correction, will need a rotary, um, focus is pretty important. So there you go. All right, so UV lasers, what are my thoughts? 
my thoughts on com marker as well. Um, I think that the machine seems like it's working pretty good. Um, I don't have any complaints. Uh, com marker itself, they had um, several things that others don't always, like the material libraries, things like that. Granted, I think that the material library, uh, the settings that they have in there are not all necessarily optimized for what it is. So just like anything, you gotta test, you gotta dial it in for what you want and what looks good to you. Um, but UV itself, um, the reason I wanted it was really to potentially get into glass more. And so far, it looks like the glass is coming out good. Um, it might be a little underpowered, at least for my research in the community that a lot of people are saying that 10 watts is really where the glass comes in. This is a five watt machine. So I'm putting links and stuff here, all over, whatever, um, and then in the description, so that way you can see what it is that I'm working with um, and what you saw in all of the examples. But, I mean, you look at it, UV, it's doing marking on metal, surface, um, marking on glass, marking on wood, marking on organic materials, like the, the binder that I showed you. So it's really bridging the gap on marking a lot of materials. Didn't work great on clear acrylic. So that may be a struggle. Um, I don't think it's actually gonna work, at least from what I've seen, but I'm gonna do some more research. So I do think that it has a place in my shop and especially for different products that I want to venture into and to teach people. But now having a UV kind of completes my collection. So we've got UV, fiber, and CO2 Galvo. So I, I'm, I'm liking it so far, but that is just my, my thoughts. I'm not trying to push it one way or the other, but if UV, glassware, things like that, is kind of what you're thinking about, this might be the right guy. It's supposed to be one of the most universal lasers out there. Um, not necessarily comm marker, but UV lasers. Um, it's supposed to mark the, the widest range of materials. So if you are interested in it, I'll leave it in the description so you guys can take a look. Um, comm marker also has fiber lasers and other stuff. But if you really want to, you can reach out to me. I will leave my business uh, contact so that way you can contact me via Facebook Messenger, um, my business account, and we can talk more about Galvos. Um, whether that is UV, fiber, or CO2 Galvo. Um, and I'll help you find the right one. So if this video was helpful, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.